Hello there, welcome. This is the Brew Better series by Stone Creek Coffee. My name's Joshua, I'm the tech director here at Stone Creek. And I'm Drew Pond, I'm the director of operations. Welcome to the Stone Creek Coffee Learning Lab. Today we're going to be learning about the V60. That is this conical brewer right in front of me. But before we get into that, I also want to talk about the coffee that we'll be working with. From the new Mitaboni Co-op in Kenya, it is our Kenya Sunbird AA. This is a Kenyan coffee, it's from the second crop of the year. Super delicious, super juicy. It's going on, we're gonna to try to keep it around until around March, but if you can get your hands on some, definitely go and try it out. We're gonna teach you how to brew it on the V60 here. So let's talk about the V60 a little bit. You've probably seen this guy before. Conical brewing chamber, it's at 60 degrees, that's why they call it the V60. We're looking inside here, we've got these ridges which allow the water to flow in a spiral direction while it also aerates and keeps a cycle of air through so that the coffee can drain a lot easier. And as you can see, there's a single hole in the bottom some of the other brewers on the market have three holes, multiple holes. This is one of the first pour over methods that was made in around 2004 and one of the first and been the most consistent. Very popular brew method at specialty coffee shops. It's my favorite for sure. And I particularly like the, the big hole at the bottom versus small holes because it helps you get a faster brew time, which lowers your risk of over extraction, which when coffee goes bad, I mean in the brewing process, 99% of the time it's because the coffee's over extracted, which yeah. is either the result of the wrong grind size or uh, you've got the wrong grind size. So it's always the result of the wrong grind size. Yeah. So the V60 is made by Hario, which is also the manufacturer of this beautiful little filter that we're gonna use to brew. So this is what you'll get out of the bag. I'm gonna take this little end section here, cinch it down, fold it over. And the reason we're doing that is so we can get a lot more of a circular filter so that it sits well inside this conical shaped brewing chamber. This is the number two size V60. They actually make all different sizes, only one shape, but all different sizes. There's number one, that's little tiny baby V60. Number four, which is a daddy shark version of V60. We like the number two. It's a good size for brewing one or two cups of coffee. So before we get into pre-wetting the filter, we're just gonna talk about the grind size that we have. What we're looking for is kind of like a beach sand or like table salt texture. What we're looking for when we're brewing is a quick brew time. So when you're brewing at home, if things don't kind of pan out the way you want them to, just go ahead and check that grind size as Drew was talking about earlier. We're gonna look for inconsistencies or if it's too fine or too coarse, this is where you wanna start. And we can help you out with that. So if you're having trouble with that, just contact us. We can definitely help you out finding the right grind size for you. You can email us at customers at stonecreekcoffee.com or you can slide into our DMs on Facebook and Instagram at Stone Creek Coffee. Cool, so let's start with pre-wetting this filter. What we're doing is one, we're preheating the vessel, both the carafe beneath and the V60 itself warming it up, and we're also getting that nasty paper taste out of the filter. We are also reducing the amount of water retention that that filter will have when we're actually brewing the coffee. So we're gonna go ahead and dump that water, Then we got our 24 grams of coffee right here. And since we're both gonna be drinking, I'll use this spoon to create a little divot in the center. And that divot's gonna allow us to get more water on more coffee quicker. You're going for a Mount St. Helens kind of vibe here. Nice little dip in. So we're taking our hot water. We're gonna be doing a 30 second bloom at 50 grams of water. So we're gonna start it off, start the timer here. Start in the middle and just kind of saturate all those grounds till you hit 50 grams. And what we do is we excavate and we really aerate those grounds, spin them around, scoop them around, trying to get as much water as we can around there so that we're getting an even extraction and a full extraction. We're pouring in the rest of the water. Our final weight is gonna be 360 grams. May seem like that's a lot for the V60, but if you have the grind size right, the water is gonna be pouring out fast enough that by the time you get to 360, it'll be the perfect amount. Now we wait. So this brew cycle should take anywhere between one minute, 45 seconds, and two and a half. And what Drew's doing right now is he's spinning around the coffee. He's allowing that coffee bed to settle and create a flat surface on that coffee bed. And that way we know that we've got an even extraction and a clean extraction. As I mentioned before, the brew cycle is so fast, the little agitation is gonna actually help you get sweet, clean, and juicy flavors from the coffee. If you don't do enough agitation and the brew cycle is really quick, you may end up with a kind of weak coffee. Not bitter, because you won't have over-extracted it. You'll have under-extracted it, which doesn't happen often, but it can happen. Might take a little bit, so in your time, once you pour in that water, you can go get your cups ready. We might as well just grab those cups and preheat oh, yeah. them. Preheating your cups is a super great process and a super great habit to form, so that way your cup is warm and that your coffee doesn't lose 
a lot of its heat once it goes into that cup. So we're just gonna get some of that hot water in while we're waiting for the coffee to drip. We're at two minutes and 20 seconds as the brew finishes up. That's dang near perfect. Love it. So we're just giving it a swirl to make sure it's all mixed together. And we're gonna pour it out for you. Thank you. For myself. Let's talk about this coffee. In a Kenyan in particular, we're looking for big acidity, like big body and big acidity. Sometimes people even say it kind of reminds them of tomato, like because when you like bite in a tomato, there's a viscosity that sort of covers your mouth. You don't want it to necessarily taste like tomatoes, but you want that big viscosity plus acidity in a good Kenyan coffee, which this, this one delivers. It's got a floral aromatic nasal property to it, mm -hmm. which is quite enjoyable. It's helpful when you're drinking coffee to get your nose up in there, invite it to the party, treat it well, because it'll help your overall palate experience. We're slurping so that coffee's going all over our tongue, getting all over those taste buds. We're trying to get as much out of this coffee per sip. And I'm, I'm tasting a lot of juice. I don't know, it's a big experience. It's not, it's not subtle at all. It's definitely a delicious cup. We're talking about like uh, citrus, limes and lemons, raspberries, blackberries. Often it shows up kind of tart. So the combination of viscosity and then tartness is really unique to Kenyan coffees. You don't see that pretty much anywhere else. Get one more sip in here. We like it. V60, that's what we brewed on today. There are lots of different recipes. This is ours. Super delicious cup of coffee, super clean. Try it out. You can get these rad brewers at stonecreekcoffee.com as well as this rad Sunbird Kenya AA and many other farm to cup coffees. If you have any questions, drop us a line over at customers at stonecreekcoffee.com or check us out on the socials at Stone Creek Coffee. Remember, brewing coffee can be pretty difficult, but it's also super rewarding. So remember to never stop learning.